So, you and your siblings sent spit into one of those DNA testing companies and got different results. Oh no, is my dad really my dad? You learn you're 45% German and your sibling is 32%. Your results say that you're 20% Irish and your sibling is 15%. Your sibling's results say that they are 10% Native American, but you don't have any. How in the world is this possible? In this video, I will give you a very easy explanation using something that we can all relate to, food. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and this subject is something that we get asked about a lot, so we wanted to make a video to help explain it. Besides building family trees for clients, we make history videos all over the United States and a few countries, so if you like videos like that, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos. Now back to the DNA. When a sibling gets their DNA results back and it's much different than our results, it sends many of us into a panic. Often, we begin to wonder if our father is really our father. Then many of us think, oh my, am I adopted? While those situations are entirely possible and why it is true that many DNA results have led to some serious family problems, there is almost always a very simple explanation as to why your results are different than your siblings. I've heard many examples given to help folks understand this situation, but the one that I made up that always seems to help folks understand is my example of good old American stew. Stews come in many varieties and ingredients, depending on the cultures and the region of the country. There is never a right or wrong as to what to put in your stew. It's all up to what you like. The stews in New England may have some lobster in them, while in Texas, it would be a sin to not have some beef. And if you're in Idaho, you'd better have plenty of potatoes. Now imagine all the DNA of all of your ancestors as a huge vat of stew. Depending on the region that your ancestors come from, you have different ingredients in your stew than other people. Let's say your stew has some beef, carrots, potatoes, peas, and celery. When it's time for you to be born, we mix up that vat of stew and ladle out a bowl that becomes your own personal DNA. For example's sake, let's say that your bowl has a lot of beef, several carrots, couple peas, and one chunk of potato, and not any celery at all. Now comes along your baby sibling. We laid a lot another bowl. Inside their bowl is a good amount of beef, a few carrots, a ton of peas and celery, and not one single piece of potato. Perhaps we laid a lot a few more bowls for more siblings. And unless we have a stew that only has one or two ingredients, it's highly unlikely that we will find two bowls with the same percentages of ingredients. All the bowls come from the same vat of stew, but are quite unique and different. As with the bowls of stew, the same is true of us. Even though we come from the same two parents, DNA is random and we will get different mixtures from them. The percentages can be interesting as well. We could have one parent that is 10% of one ethnicity such as Native American and the other parent be 0% and our DNA makeup could be 30% Native American. How can our DNA percentage be higher than our parent, especially after splitting our DNA with our other parent? The answer can be explained with the stew example. The vat of stew may only have a small percentage of celery but if ladled just right, an individual bowl could have a lot of celery. The odds are statistically low, but it is entirely possible. By the way, speaking of Native American DNA, be sure to see our video entitled, No, You Are Not Cherokee. The link is in the description of this video, and you can click on it at the end of this video as well. We have made a lot of people mad about this most common myth in genealogy. So there you have it, the reason why your DNA percentages are very different than your siblings. This is also a great example as to why more than one sibling should get tested, especially if you're looking for something that will be a very small percentage. Many say, well, my sister got tested, so I don't need to do mine. While it is true that siblings often share the same ethnic groups, it isn't uncommon for one to show a small percentage of something different. 
All three of my children have a small amount of something that the others do not. The final thing that I'd like to address is that it is impossible for us to have a certain ethnic DNA that neither of our parents have. If neither of our parents have potatoes in their stew, it is impossible for us to find some in our bowls. If our results say that we have something that our parents' results do not have, either our parents or our test is in error. Testing more family members could help clear up this error. Also, it should be noted that any result of 2% or less could be considered in what is called DNA noise. And while it is possible that it is true, it could be showing an error. Testing parents and other siblings can help explain those small percentages in your results. No matter what ingredients that are in your bowl of stew, you should be proud of and celebrate it. Also, even if you don't have any potatoes in your bowl, but the vat of stew that your bowl came from has them, they are still your ancestors, and you should be proud of them as well. Ancestry isn't always just science. It's often spiritual, and paying attention to how we feel inside of us about our ancestors is a powerful and moving experience. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Thank you.